The new car did not hold up very well at Bristol, and Denny Hamlin, Dale Jr., Martin Truex Jr., Kevin Harvick, and Rodney Childress are ready for version 2.0. Let's talk about it. Coming up next. <laughs> What is going on, everybody? Hope you are doing good today. All right, if you're looking for the Chris Busher video, that was actually the video before this. Uh, so if you're looking for that one, go back and check for that one. But this one is obviously uh, not going to be very friendly to the next-gen car. So in an effort to be fair to the next-gen car, it does have some positives. It has brought some positives with it. So I'll talk about those first before I jump in to the long list of negatives. But let's start off with the positives first. Of course, first, we've got 19 different winners this season. It has given some level of parity throughout the field. Everybody is working from the same chassis. Nobody is designing and spending all this money. So in the long run, it could possibly be cheaper as well because nobody's designing chassis. And it has put the smaller teams at least on a level playing field with these bigger teams. And you have seen 19 different winners so you have to look at that and say that that is definitely a positive. The second thing, it has helped out the 1.5s, the cookie cutters, as people refer to them. It has helped the racing on those tracks significantly. This new car has definitely made those tracks a lot more interesting to watch. And it has also been fairly decent at the road courses. We've seen several different people win on road courses this season. So it has also done very well on the road courses. And the composite body, we saw it in the Xfinity series for a long time. We knew that was going to be a big benefit of this car, but the composite bodies have also been a benefit of this car because you're no longer cutting tires down because the sheet metal gets jagged and cuts into a tire. So you're not seeing tires go down because of that, but we are going to get into tires here in just a minute. So the new car does have its benefits and things you can take off of it before you iterate until the next generation of this next generation car. But that being said, it has a lot of junk that goes with it. And let's talk about some of that that the drivers are dealing with right now. Now, Bristol was a race I've been waiting for all season. Not Bristol dirt, but Bristol on the concrete because Bristol is a very uni a unique track it adds so much more load than just about any other track we go to. And I knew this Bristol race would be the true test of the new car because you're just not seeing the kind of forces on this car that they see at Bristol just about anywhere else. So I knew if we were going to have parts and components failure, Bristol and probably Dover would be your two tracks where you see a lot of the cars go through some serious issues. And so I was waiting for this race and it finally came. And I was not disappointed because I thought the car would have some struggles here, but I was disappointed in the fact of how many struggles this car had. So let's start with the tires. The tires were an absolute mess. You can blame the teams all you want to for starting too low on air pressures. And early in the season, that might have been a fair critique. But these teams have worked with this car for a long time now, and we have seen less and less of tire issues going forward throughout this season. But in this particular race... Just count them. Ford teams, if they wanted to put it all on Ford, Ford was starting the tire pressures down too low. I mean, let's think about it. The 21, the 21 had multiple problems. The 15, the 2, the 12, the 6, the 22, and those were just the Ford teams. But we also saw it from the 43, the 11, the 20. So we saw all of those teams have some type of tire issue. So they, they might want to put it on Ford, and they might want to put it on the teams for starting the tire pressures too low. But I think for sure it was they weren't used to the force of this track and I think Goodyear brought a tire that that was not ready for this track because you don't see that many top teams you don't see that many top teams have tire issues and it was very reminiscent of the Indianapolis race in the early 2000s where they had to stop every 10 or 15 or 20 laps or whatever come in and get tires it was very reminiscent of that because the tires just did not hold up and I think it is a Goodyear issue or it is a new car putting too much load on a Goodyear tire issue but either way the tires need to be addressed the second thing, we saw a ton of suspension components break for as rugged and as rigid as they made this new chassis. They have put some very weak parts on it that need to be adjusted or fixed in the offseason or sooner, as soon as possible, really, because you saw those components just giving up all the way throughout the racetrack. Ryan Blaney had a flat tire. When he went and got that flat tire fixed, came back on the racetrack, something happened in the rear end of that car and you saw it dragging. That's just the, the biggest and most glaring example I can think of in my head. But other cars also had suspension problems, so they need to 
look at the suspension and beef it up for tracks like Bristol, tracks like Dover that have this increased load that you might not see at another track. These cars are based on sports cars and you can't put the less rigid, less rugged sports car parts on this car because it is not handling it. It's a heavier car than a sports car. So you need to beef up some of your components there. So that is one issue. Another, if you want to call it a uh, chassis or suspension piece that really took a beating here, especially with the Toyota teams, was the power steering. We saw Eric Almarola, a Ford team, also lose the power steering. So it wasn't just Toyota, but Toyota was the main one. You saw Martin Truex. You saw both of the 2311 cars lose power steering. Every there, there were just so many teams that had power steering issues that were intermittent or fully the power steering went out. So that was something else. The power steering needs to be looked at. And they said one of those cars, it just blew the reservoir off, blew the top off the reservoir. So too much load on the suspension once again. And that's what I was expecting at this Bristol track. I knew Bristol would be the real test of this car. So once again, the just all of the smaller suspension parts need to be beefed up for these cars, for tracks like Bristol. The other thing that needs to be fixed with this car, I said it races better on mile and a half, and it does, but it has almost ruined the short track product. Bristol, Martinsville, those are races you look forward to every single year because you know it's going to be classic Saturday night short track racing. Well, once again, we saw on a short track it was almost impossible to pass because... Well, the cars can't get down low enough on the ground to generate the type of force that they are used to, the type of side force that they are used to. You can't get the proper travel suspension because of those blocks on the bottom of that aerodynamic tray at the bottom of the car, whatever you want to call it, the airfoil at the bottom of the car. Really, for short tracks, I don't understand why NASCAR doesn't just take the bottom airfoil off. Just be done with it. Get rid of it. It's a short track. Let them race classic short track style that would 100 percent according to just about everybody in the garage fix the problem so that is another thing that needs to be addressed specifically for short tracks and we've seen nascar has different packages for different tracks i don't know why they are digging their feet into the ground so hard about this just take just take the thing off and let them race that being said that's not just my opinion there are several drivers who agree with me and let's take a look at these Denny Hamlin said, we need the next gen 2.0, just got to figure out who is going to pay for it. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. responded with a picture of the Xfinity series. Then, of course, you had Martin Truex Jr. flipping off the car and, you know, muttering under his breath. And then even in the interview afterwards, he said, what did Kevin Harvick say? And he quoted Kevin Harvick about having crappy parts. So there you go. There's two more drivers right there, Truex and Kevin Harvick. A lot of you sent me messages saying Kyle Larson had a lot of negative negative things to say about the new car as well. So there are several drivers who have very strong opinions. They're ready for this car to be updated for next year. Hopefully they'll get the thing updated before then. And all that was mentioned without mentioning how stiff the chassis is and it's sending all that impact directly to the driver. They need to add crumple zones. If you're familiar with this channel, you've heard me say that multiple times, so I didn't want to harp on it again here. But if you're new to the channel, that is the first thing that needs to be fixed is add crumple zones to keep the drivers nice and safe going forward. But uh, let me know down in the comments anything I missed, anything you guys want to add or just your thoughts or opinions on it. Let me know down in the comments. I'll try to get to as many as I can. If you made it this far, feel free to subscribe. The subscriptions help out the channel a whole lot, and I really appreciate all you guys who are subscribed. You keep this thing going, and other than that, thanks for your time. Peace.